Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if it's your first time here, then welcome. My name is Becca. Today's video is one that I'm super excited about. Make Beauty has continued to come out with their Color Cosmetics launches. So they've come out with a dewy cheek tint, so like a cream blush, a serum balm intense formula, so it's the more pigmented version of their pre-existing formula of the Serum Balm, which is one of my favorites, and also a whole range of eyeliners. I obviously have my base done, I have my brows done, but nothing else. So we're gonna do eyes, lips, and cheeks, all with Make Beauty. I do have an ongoing discount code with them, which is Becca15. I will link that below in the description box if you're curious to try any of these launches. So let's start with cheeks. Um, Make Beauty sent over this insane PR box. It's it's obviously beautiful. These are their Heat Stroke Dewy Gel Cheek Tints, and these are their Serum Balm Intense uh, Shades. So you can see there's quite a lot of shades. There's one, two, three, four, eight cheek tints and 13 Serum Balm Intense Shades. And then this is the box for the eyeliners, and there are, I think, 12? Yeah, 12 shades, and these are called the Continuum Waterproof Gel Eyeliner. So I'm going to use as many of those shades today as I can, but let's start with cheeks and lips. So the Heat Stroke Dewy Gel Tint is described as an innovative gel tint that is formulated with skin enhancing pigments to create a dewy watercolor blush effect. Skin plumping brown algae enhances for volume and radiance available in eight shades. So this is what the packaging looks like. And here is the tube. It's silver on top and gold on bottom, and it has the Make logo on top. It's really beautiful. First, we've got the shade Feverish, which is like a bright cherry red. Then we've got the shade Stimulated, which is a hot pink. And then we've got Slush, which is like a mauvey pink. This is the shade Scorched, which is like a terracotta. Then we've got Inflamed, which is a bright orangey red. This is the shade Swelter, which is almost like a berry, berry plum sort of shade. And these last two shades I think are closest to bronzer contour shades. So this first one is Toasted. It's like a warm caramely brown. And this deeper bronzy shade is called Baked. And I think you can also tell by these swatches that they're probably not going to set down. They are, after all, a dewy cheek tint. So they have that kind of glazed, shiny surface. And I'm really curious how they're gonna look on the skin. I wanna start with this Scorched shade, which is the True Terracotta. And this is the kind of shade that for me is an ideal one and done kind of cheek shade because actually it is almost like a bronzer in that it has that bit of red, but it also has that sort of sun-tanned kind of look, maybe even sunburnt kind of look without the actual sunburn. For my skin type, I actually find that with dewy cheek products, applying with a brush or with a sponge is better than applying directly onto the cheeks for me. Just because I have combo oily skin and I find that this method of application disturbs my base makeup um, the least. So I'm taking my e.l.f. airbrush stipple. I'm just gonna take a little bit because this shade is quite pigmented. And then I'm going to lightly tap, tap, tap kind of where my blush would meet my um, bronzer, right on the top of the cheekbone there. Wow, that that's a really pretty color, right? I love that. It definitely has a bit of a glossy sheen, but it's very thin on the cheeks, especially when I apply it this way. Ooh, that's so pretty. Did I just discover a new favorite? Oh my gosh. I mean, honestly, you can see what I mean about this being a one and done sort of cheek shade, but I do want to try the others. So I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to build other shades around it and I'm going to do the other side. So just on top of the cheekbone right there. Ooh, that is so pretty. I love it. Then I'm going in with Inflamed, this bright orange. I love an orange blush personally, especially in the summer. I just find it to be the most beautiful, like sun-kissed kind of look. So I'm just gonna flip the brush over and I'm going to tap, tap, tap. 
and I'm going to try to apply it closer to the center of the cheek, like right here for that little sun-kissed vibe. I'm just going to tap to blend it into that original shade. By the way, I know I zoomed you in closer so you might see this. I got a new piercing uh, two days ago at Studs in West Hollywood for a Fleur event, um, the perfume brand, which is Chrysal Lim's perfume brand. And they had an event there, so I got this pierced, but it's definitely a little bit bruised and a little bit tender, so don't be alarmed. <laughs> I don't have like an ear infection, it's just newly pierced, so it's a little bit red and um, tender. Just wanted to let you know, but I'm very into this like ear look. I am really into greens right now. I'm also going to take um, whatever product is left on my brush, no additional product, and just sweep it, like pat it across the bridge of my nose, just for that additional sun-kissed kind of look. Now I'm going to take Toasted, which is the lighter of the bronzy shades, and I'm going to start to do a bit of a bronzer look. I'm just taking a very old Sephora brush. It's the 90 brush. I don't even know if they make this anymore, but any kind of fluffy synthetic brush is good for this. And same thing, just tap, tap, tap a little bit of product. And I'm just going to go slightly under where I put the blush, but keeping it focused towards the back of the cheekbone and blending it into the hairline and almost up into the temple. For me, I find that that creates a more lifted and natural look. Then I'm gonna pick up a little bit more product and just stamp it around my hairline on my forehead. This is where I would naturally get some sun and blend it into the hairline. And again, I'm keeping those like stamping motions just so that I don't disturb the foundation underneath. I think I'm gonna go in lastly with um, Baked, which is that deeper neutral, oops, that deeper neutral brown. And I'm going to very sparingly use it as contour. So I've got my Real Techniques um, Sheer Radiance Fan Brush. I think this is meant for highlighter, but I actually think it's perfect for this going to pick up just a tiny, tiny bit of this shade because it is quite deep. And then I'm going to stamp it right where my ear is, the top of my ear is, and just keep it focused right there and stamp, 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 stamp until it's blended. Same thing here. And using that flat edge will help you keep this shade really focused so it doesn't sort of blend out too much. All right, that is the cheeks done. I love the way this looks. I am oftentimes pretty wary about very dewy cheek products as someone with combo oily skin because I don't like the feeling of greasiness on my skin, but this formula is very thin and I think especially applied with a brush, it almost um, diffuses that dewy formula across the cheek. So it does have a bit of dewiness. It's in the name, so I'm not mad at that. Um, but it's not like thick and tacky on the skin. It doesn't feel gluey or heavy. It just feels almost like I just applied skincare. It's that kind of dewiness. I do think these shades are also very pigmented. I'm pleasantly surprised by that because oftentimes cheek tints or very kind of sheer juicy cheek colors don't show up on deep skin tones because there just isn't enough pigment in the formula. But these obviously come in a range of lighter to richer and deeper shades. And so I think because the formula is so flexible, you can definitely sheer it out the way that I did on a lighter skin tone, or you can build up the pigment for real on a deeper skin tone. And I think these tones especially would look beautiful on all skin tones. So I'm very excited about this and let's get into the eyeliners. So this is the Continuum Waterproof Gel Eyeliner. They all come in this gold pencil and it has a cap that comes off and you can see the shade here. And it's a twist up pencil, so you twist from the bottom here. And this is a pleasant surprise. So each pencil has a brush at the end that I actually think will be useful. It's kind of like a paddle shaped brush that has a thin edge 
um, on top and it's like a flat shape. So I think you could use it to smudge or you could use it also to sharpen the line depending on if you use it flat or if you use it sideways. And then you pull that out and you get the sharpener for the pencil. So I like that you get actually useful tools with this pencil. This actually feels like a brush that I would use and I'm glad that the, the sharpener is in the pencil itself so you don't lose it because I always lose separate sharpeners. That celestial right there, Halo, Otherworld, Nebula, Retrograde, Emerald, Gamma Ray, Galaxy, Deep Space, Violet Abyss, Interstellar, and Eclipse. All right, I brought you in a little closer. Let me tell you about my vision for what I would like to do with these eyeliners and we'll see if it actually works. I would like to start out with that first bright champagne shade in the inner corner and then transition into the metallic olive and then transition into probably the deep brown or bronze. Um, I don't know if that's gonna work because I haven't tried these yet, but that's my vision and we'll build and see what happens. By the way, it's been about, I don't know, five minutes since I finished swatching and these are completely budge proof. Like they are not moving around. I'm very confused, it's wild. They were really creamy when they applied, but nothing's coming off. Like even the metallic shine, which oftentimes like does rub off on eyeliners like this is not coming off. So very impressed. So I'm gonna take Celestial, that very first really bright champagne shade, and I'm just going to smudge this on the inner corner. I did prime my eyes um, because I just do that with any eye look because I have oily eyelids, but now I'm wondering if that was even really necessary. I'm going to see how this brush works. I'm just going to sort of smooth over the eyeliner since I'm using it almost as like a cream eyeshadow. <laughs> I have to say, I really like that this brush is shaped the way it is because it's actually practical the way that I'm using it um, almost as a really small eyeshadow brush, but you could also flip it on its edge if you want a finer line. Then I'm going to go into Gamma Ray, which is that metallic olive shade and I'm going to continue the line across the middle of my lid. A lot of times, olive shades in eyeshadow as well as eyeliners have a really deep black base, but I can tell this one doesn't have too much of a black base. It actually looks like the true color on the eye, and so it has a bit of brightness, which I actually really like. Then I'm going to go into Emerald, which is the matte green shade. I think this will work. Is that what I wanna do? Yeah, I think so. Just for the tail of this little like baby wing. If you have hooded eyes, you want to relax your eye to see where the wing should go because a lot of times if you have hooded eyes, you know, you do your makeup and then you open your eye and the makeup is gone or the wing is facing a completely different direction. So I'm just gonna work slowly. I'm gonna smudge where those two shades come together. I don't even think I really wanna do a wing. I just want that to finish at a point. For me, this is like a version of a baby wing if I don't wanna carry it out all the way. And then I'll just take the brush on its flat side, just sort of like pinch that little corner so it ends at a point. All right, that is the eye, I think, for now. Um, I'm very into that. Also, these have set down and I have a feeling they're not going to move, even on my eyely lid. My eyely lids, my oily eyelids. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and maybe we'll finish off with something deep in the lash line. So that's the look on my upper lid. I think I'm gonna line my waterline slash like get in my lash line with the shade, um, Nebula, which was just that matte deep brown. I actually have really high hopes for this because it was super creamy going on, even though it was one of the matte shades, it just glided onto the skin. So I'm not going to fully line my waterline. I'm just gonna get under here and like into my lash line 
just for a bit of emphasis around the eye and a little bit of depth. And I just sort of like to get in between the lashes. It's not as dramatic as lining your whole waterline, but it does make your lashes look a little bit fuller once you have mascara on. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I actually did use the sharpener for the emerald shade just so I could get um, a slight wing at the end here, and it worked really well. And then I'm gonna do the same thing just on the outer corner of my lower lash line. If I take my lower liner all the way in, it actually closes off my eye. So for me, I just smudge a little bit right there, literally the outer third. And then I take the brush and I smudge it inward about halfway but I really keep the shade focused on the outer corner. For me, that's the most eye-opening technique. So you can see there's more definition, a bit more drama, and just more emphasis around the lash line than there is on this side. I would wear the makeup both ways, but I just wanted to show you what this shade looks like. So that's the liner done. I feel like these are a great replacement for the now discontinued Marc Jacobs um, gel liners. They, came, they also came in many different shades. They were a gel formula. They were super budge proof. And this reminds me a lot of that formula. And I'm very excited to have these in my collection because I have very watery eyes. I have allergies. I have hooded eyes. And so for all of these reasons, I find that I'm prone to eyeliner smudging and this just feels really locked in. Usually if something's going to smudge, I can really tell pretty quickly um, if it's transferring onto my upper lid and that's not happening. So very excited about this discovery. I do think there's a little bit of inconsistency between the shades. Um, I think most of the matte shades are very creamy. I would say the more colorful matte shades are the stiffest of the formula, like that emerald, the brick red shade. Um, it's not bad because I think it makes for really long wear. It's just something to note. And then the metallic shades are the creamiest, which I really like. But that being said, I think the deep black and the deep brown, which are probably gonna be the two best sellers of the line, are super, super creamy on the skin and across the eyelid. So just something to note about the different shades in the formula. And let's go on to lips. We're gonna finish off with the Serum Balm Intense. And I'm so excited about these because the Serum Balm is one of my favorite um, products from Make Beauty. It is a liquefied, serum-y lip balm. The original shades are all quite sheer, so they came out with these intense versions that have much more pigment, but they're equally balmy and comfortable and just really nourishing on the lips. So this is the tube. It's like a chubby silver tube. It's got that little window so you can see the product, matte black cap, and this has a chubby applicator, which I love, and it just makes application really comfortable and easy. Personally, I think the shade selection is really interesting. They have your neutrals, your natural shades. They also have really bright shades, and they also have these really deep shades that look deep in the tube. Um, and just when you look at the formula, but because this formula is sheer and glossy and sheeny, it actually has a very different effect on the lips. So first up we have surface level, that's Nude Nova Plus. Then we've got Magnetic Mauve, and then we've got Berry Moon. This is Shock Layer. Then my next favorite shade is the shade Anti-Gravity. Then I have Dark Energy, that is Purple Paradigm. This is Pink Cerise Plus. Another one of the more interesting shades in this range is Orchid Fever. After that is Lilac Layer Plus, that is Sun Flare Plus. And the last shade is Milky Way. So these are all the shades. You can see they're glossy and balmy and sheer and juicy and just everything I love in a lip formula. So I can already tell you I've been wearing these and it's a true win in my book. This formula is not long lasting, 
but they fade evenly and because they're a sheer pigment, they don't leave weird streaks of pigment behind in your lip lines, even the brighter shades. And then you can reapply really easily. So it's nice under a mask. It's nice if you're going out to eat and they're just great for every day. And they actually nourish your lips over time. I will apply a few of these um, for you right now, just because it's an easy formula to wipe off and reapply. So first up is anti-gravity. This is the one that I said is one of my favorites and it's probably the most neutral nude shade. And then I'm going to apply Nude Nova. This is a very easy formula to apply, super comfortable on the lips. It's like one shade richer, just a little bit, and a little bit more red than anti-gravity. Let me show you a bright color. Let's try on Pink Cerise, which is the hot pink. And I'm applying a really sheer layer here. I think you can see there's definitely a way to make these bright shades really wearable. You can see the bright shades are staining my lips a little bit more, but um, even after I wipe them off, it's not like a weird butthole lips <laughs> kind of stain. This is Sun Flare plus my other favorite bright, which is that coral orange. Here it is, sheared out. It's very fun, tropical, summery, and I love an orange lip. And lastly, let me show you one of these deep shades so you can get an idea for what they look like on the lips. This is Milky Way. This is the last shade that I swatched, and it's kind of that like milk chocolate shade. Personally, I think this has a Clinique Black Honey kind of vibe to it in that it shears out on the lips and it actually creates a bit of a berry stain, but this is like a chocolatey berry. And I think it's a really sexy, beautiful, dramatic, but not overdone kind of lip shade. So I'm closing it out in Sun Flare Plus. I just wanted to finish off with a really summery look. And I think something about the orange paired with the eye, it's giving Bird of Paradise or like Miami tropical vacation vibes. Um, and it just makes me feel happy and summery and fun. So I think I'll be able to wear this makeup for five to six hours today. I'll leave my thoughts about how everything wore in a pinned comment below. I already told you how the serum balm is. It's not a long lasting formula, but I love it. I am curious to see how the cheeks and the eyes will wear. I have a feeling that this eyeliner is going to be very budge proof and that if anything, I'm going to have to really be thorough about cleansing to get it off, which is a good problem to have. I'm curious about this cheek tint because I do have combo skin. I did not powder over the cheek tint. As you can tell, I'm very shiny. There's a lot of dewiness and glossiness going on. But, you know, sometimes cheek tints, depending on their formula, actually do have a lot of longevity. So I'll keep you posted on how that wears in the pinned comment. If you have any questions for me, anything I missed, let me know in the comments below, as well as any feedback on the new backdrop. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that it's helpful to really get to see and focus on the detail of the makeup. Um, I would love for you to subscribe, obviously, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.